Hello. Welcome to another session of Surgical Pathology Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and today we're coming to you again from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center with another remarkable and interesting case uh, drawn from the files of the Stevenson Cancer Center uh, and its expertise uh, today in gynecologic pathology. A uh, very interesting case, a 28-year-old woman who presented initially with an abnormal pap test and on exam was found to have a mass um, uh, that was uh, not your usual uh, finding. So she ultimately came to resection and here's a representative section of her cervix. As you can see here, we have endocervical uh, glands uh, over here on this aspect here. Um, but we have a very large bulky tumor deeply penetrating into the cervical stroma, nearly to the inked margin, uh, all the way from the surface. Um, and it looks as though it's a little bit heterogeneous. So let's look first over here at the uh, transition zone uh, from normal endocervical mucosa to uh, neoplas neoplastic tissue. So as we look here, we see that we have uh, some apparent glandular tissue, uh, sort of a cribriform pattern here. A little bit more over here, we see almost a central necrosis, almost a comedo-like picture. Um, and certainly high-grade glandular uh, neoplasia with uh, uh, gland in gland formation, uh, areas of uh, central necrosis or di tumor diathesis and these nice central lumina with uh, peripherally palisaded uh, cells. We can see that there are mitotic figures uh, in this area, um, and there is palisading, and all the features that we like to see in a typical endocervical type adenocarcinoma. Now this patient's a little bit on the young side for endocervical adenocarcinoma, so we might ask ourselves uh, why that is and uh, what might be going on here uh, as we look a little bit further. Uh, here we see the, the tumor is a little bit more solid. And uh, as we move along over here, uh, we can see that this tumor becomes much more solid without uh, very much glandular differentiation. Although still here near the surface, uh, we do still seem to have this cribriform pattern of uh, glandular neoplasia uh, with very uniform cells and a fairly typical mitotic rate that we would expect for endocervical type adenocarcinoma. So let's step back again and look a little bit more at the uh, overall architecture. Here we see more of a corded and trabecular pattern without prominent glands and here we have a more solid pattern uh, without evident glandular spaces. So let's look a little bit over here and see what's going on here. Um, this again is this more trabecular, uh, infiltrative nests, and very poorly formed, if any, uh, sort of glandular differentiation. Here we see just very high-grade tumor. And here notice that the nuclear pleomorphism has increased. The cells show more apoptosis. There's a necrosis of uh, more uh, tissue cell areas. And we begin to see a little bit of uh, nuclear molding in some of these cells, suggesting some potentially uh, neuroendocrine type differentiation, which is a little bit unusual. Look a little bit further. And here we can see this uh, sort of uh, uh, insular uh, pattern. Here again, broad areas of necrosis uh, of this uh, tissue. Uh, and then here, just very high grade uh, carcinoma, fairly small cells, single cell necrosis, nuclear molding, uh, and so forth. So this suggests a very interesting differential. Is this endocervical type adenocarcinoma that has just become very poorly differentiated and has very poor forming glands? Or is this a small cell squamous carcinoma? Or is this a neuroendocrine tumor, uh, neuroendocrine carcinoma, either large cell or small cell type uh, that is uh, 
uh, forming this very rapidly growing and deeply invasive uh, tumor. I think seeing here the degree of uh, molding and uh, sort of uh, trabecular pattern uh, would raise concern. So immunohistochemical stains will help. Uh, P16 uh, will not particularly help us here because that will be positive in everything. Uh, this is probably an HPV-related uh, tumor. Uh, but we might do some neuroendocrine markers, and we could choose to do one or several uh, to evaluate this tumor. Uh, we would also want to do some uh, glandular markers, uh, making sure that this was not an endometrioid-type tumor uh, with a small cell differentiation, uh, differentiating it from endocervical tumors. So looking at uh, PAX-8, looking at uh, Vimentin, uh, looking at uh, hormone receptors might also be useful uh, in this uh, scenario. And here we see there may even be some uh, extramural spread. Uh, here, as we see, um, probable nests of tumor cells out here, uh, very close to the deep margin, uh, probably associated with lymphovascular spaces. So in fact, uh, and I don't have the immunohistochemical stains to show to you, the uh, findings in this case were those of a neuroendocrine carcinoma uh, as it was positive uh, with several of our neuroendocrine markers, CD56 and synaptophysin being perhaps the most sensitive. Now, small cell neuroendocrine carcinoma of the cervix is relatively uncommon, less than 2% of cervical cancers uh, but it does occur over a wide age range from uh, relatively younger patients on into the 50s and 60s. And not infrequently, it presents with a mass uh, and may have some hormonal manifestations, uh, sometimes ACTH, sometimes other paraneoplastic type syndromes can be associated with this. Now of note, um, up to 70% 70 70 of these cases can be associated with either adenocarcinoma, as we've seen here, or squamous carcinoma. Uh, rarely you'll have a large cell neuroendocrine carcinoma component. And as we've mentioned, it should have one immunohistochemical marker that's positively. Now, most are associated with HPV-18. Um, and the prevalence of HPV-18 and other subtypes in the population may determine uh, the frequency with which you see uh, this tumor in your practice. Uh, in my experience, I've seen it much more frequently in Southeast Asia than I have in Central Oklahoma. Uh, these tumors do tend to be very aggressive, um, and even if only a minor format is the small cell tumor, uh, uh, you have to be very mindful to not miss this. Differential diagnosis is critical, uh, differentiating small cell squamous cell carcinomas, uh, as well as uh, other um, uh, neoplasms like uh, rhabdomyosarcoma or other sorts of uh, tumors uh, in this location would be important uh, to distinguish because the treatment will be vastly different. So our final sign out diagnosis today, small cell neuroendocrine carcinoma of the cervix with associated adenocarcinoma of the cervix. And that should bring at least this case into a little sharper focus. Thanks for joining me. Please subscribe and uh, comment. Uh, share with us your thoughts, what you'd like to see. Uh, in the comments below, or in the comments, uh, you'll find uh, information about how you can review the digital slide and the link to this presentation on Path Presenter. Uh, also, please note that our services are a collaborative activity with uh, Path, uh, Path, Pre Path Presenter and the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. So we hope to see you again soon. Uh, until then, have a good day.